Hey, welcome back to the Build It Basement. Today we're gonna to do our AB belting. Um, hopefully I got a couple of quick tips that will save you some headaches. Hopefully I speed up your process in AB belting your printer. We have worn 2.4 or 2.4 R2, it's the same. Um, we are using our Rama Zeidlers on this printer, but everything else should be pretty much the same. The path is the same no matter what you're using. Let's get right into it. So we got our Voron, we've got our Z belts on, we've got our gantry all leveled up. Uh, we've got our X nice and fluid on our printer. And that nice like that. And we've got a lovely manual to go by. Thank you Voron team. That um, explains the belting process as well as it can in 2D in written word. So that being said, uh, as we look through here, the belts actually pretty much go around the whole printer. Uh, you start at one side, work your way, get to the other side, and then the opposite happens on the other side. It's what makes up a Core XY printer. Uh, the belts are on two different height paths. Uh, so when they cross each other, they don't need to cross over each other. They're separate. Um, one thing that people will drone on is that your tension is the same on your belt. And the reason for that is pretty much so that your AB drive works correctly on your Core XY. Now, one of the keys to that, and one of the things that people harp on is that your belts need to be exactly the same length. Now, that reasoning for the belts being exactly the same length has absolutely nothing with anything to do with the actual function of the machine. It has to do with your tensioning of the machine and being able to count the amount of teeth for teeth, tooth, 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 teeth, the amount of teeth that you have uh, beyond your um, your tool head, your tap, or or whatever you're using to attach to your X gantry. Uh, that being said, I will give you a quick tip right now. If you are in the states or any place that uses inches, you're going to be basically looking at about 77 inches on your AB drive drive belts. Uh, for those of you that aren't using inches, that's about 195 centimeters. So I don't know why it doesn't call it out in the manual. It shouldn't be different on a 300 by 300 printer, no matter what you have. And that 77 inches or 195 centimeters will get you past the middle section of your X gantry in about three quarters way around it. So it gives you plenty of extra, but not so much that you're wasting. All right, now that I hopefully have saved you about, oh, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes of struggling with a big thing of excess belting, um, you can have your belt out like so. Let me uh, find the right camera here. Belt out like this, like so, 77 inches, 195 centimeters, uh, clipped on the ends, clipped on that end, clipped on that end, right at the last tooth so there's no excess. And then start with <clears throat> your second belt. Trim it up so you have a tooth at the end. And the path should be the same. If you're super, super, super worried about this, you can zip tie them together. I did it in my first video. Wasn't exactly sure why they had to be exactly the same length when I did the first uh, Voron 2.4. Um, and honestly, if you didn't have them exactly the same, it just means you gotta be a little bit careful when you're um, adjusting things, tightening things up. And when it comes down to it, it's going to be hard to get your, uh, your, your front idlers to be exactly tensioned the same anyways. So I'm not gonna say it's a fool's errand to do this, but, your mileage may vary based on the rest of your build. Okay. Way out of screen here, apologize for that. Actually, let me, uh, let me do, let me do that one. I think I still show up a little bit, yep. All right. And all I'm doing is grabbing my second belt and my first belt, pinching them, holding them together and giving my second belt a snip. So it is exactly the length of my first belt. So that leaves us 
actually, let's do this. Let's see what uh, what LDO is doing here. Let's see if they gave us enough to do a oops belt or a something happened and my belt got ground ground away to nothingness. They give us enough to do that. Based on the packaging, I think it said 500 some odd. Oh yeah. So you got enough to make a third belt right there. Kudos to the LDO people for giving us plenty of belting. Um, they probably use the same belt packaging for all the models they put out there, the 250, the 300, and 350. It just comes down to the economics of the belt cost versus the cost of packaging different things. So um, don't take my word for that one. But I'm guessing that there is plenty here for the 300. There may not be quite as much for a 350. I don't have the BOM in front of me. The bomb. Is it okay to say bomb on a YouTube video? Anyways. Just gonna wind that back up a little bit. There we go. All right, I got my two belts. I got my belts. And now I am going to take this camera right here. And try to manipulate it in such a way that it helps. Let me see if that helps. Let's see, yes. That helps, okay. So, no matter if you're using Rama's idlers or using the Voron idlers, uh, you're gonna wanna loosen things up here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and actually remove. And get the right tools first. I'm gonna go ahead what am I doing here? Remove these guys. Like that. And I'm gonna grab the other side. Now let's go back to the overhead. Let's do this. I'm gonna take this other one off. Loosen that up. Loosen this one all the way up. Urgh. Plastic actually holds screws pretty well. I mean, the screws way harder than the plastic, so you're pretty much cutting your own, you know. There we go. Let's do that. Yeah, you're pretty much cutting your own threads when you, uh, you thread your screws into that plastic, so it works. It holds well. And, all right, pull that one out too. All right, now that we have those out, I'm on both sides, I can put my stuff over here. I like to start at the front idlers. And here's the tip. Whenever you have a non-toothed idler, when you have a bearing, it's going to be on the back side of the belt. When it's toothed or has teeth, a lot of T's there, it's going to be using the toothed or the teeth part of your belt. Whew, hard to say. So keep that in mind, it'll help you out tremendously uh, if you just keep that in the back of your head while you're actually running things. There. All right, so I'm gonna start off like this. I'm going to run that through like so. So I have the dark side of the belt, not to be confused with the dark side of the moon. And then I'm going to slide it through like that. I'm going to put this idler back together pretty much. You can try to do it with the idler um, together in the first place. And uh, if you have the patience to try to route that, more power to you. This is a pretty tight fit. What is going on? Oh, 
Yeah, I'm a ding dong. Backwards. Pay no attention to the stupid guy making a video about how to make a war on that can't seem to get his belts in the right direction. No. Um, same thing, just make sure the damn slide is in the right direction. All right, so we got that going through like this. This we're gonna leave long for now. This is actually a real simple route, but for the back end of this, the part going against the actual printer uh, gets a little bit more complicated. Slide this guy out a little bit. And I'm gonna see if I can twist this around a little bit. And we're going to, at first, go right past our X gantry at this point. We want nothing to do with it. And that is near the, it's all, basically you're aligned to the bottom of your extrusion, which means it's going between the extrusion and the plastic of, uh, of, your, of your part here. Um, and this should, should, should be smooth. It shouldn't be rubbing against it. So it should be good. I'm gonna pull myself a little bit of extra. I'm gonna stand up. And then I'm going to face this this way a little bit. Pardon my fingers if I get them in places where they shouldn't be. Okay. Now that I got that through, I'm gonna maintain. I don't wanna twist this at all, but I'm gonna pull this all the way through the back side. And it's almost like threading a needle. You wanna do it step by step, okay? Move my camera around a little bit. A little bit. So we should be on the bot. Get over here, camera. We should be on the bottom bearing stack right here, okay? And now that we're all the way through, that's how my camera's on top of the belt, we wanna pass it through back. And the way I'm doing this, if you can see, is I'm going straight through the front. There's no sense in trying to get it around that right away. And then I'm going to make a loop. It's kind of like tying your shoes. I'm gonna make a loop, I'm gonna swoop, nope. And then I'm going to come back through the same hole. This is a little difficult, but not hugely so. I'm gonna come up through. Okay, I'm going to loop around the actual drive in a moment, but first I'm going to pass this back down through. So what I've got here is basically everything I need to push that then down like so, so I can grab that drive. You hear it? You probably can hear it. I can hear it though. I'm gonna back this away a little bit. I'm going to bring it around this bearing stack. Oh, bearing, it's not a stack. And I'm going to rotate the printer again. Having a turntable while building your Voron is not a bad idea. And then I'm simply going to come around. I'm going to pass this through the front. Like so. Okay. So, going all the way from, damn it, build a basement logo, all the way from this bearing, which is after the drive, to that bearing on the bottom still. It's never leaving the bottom, it's always there. And then, is that a good camera angle? Yep. If it would focus, we'd be good, right? And then, I'm going to bring it back down towards this way and pass it all the way through again. I'm going to pull the camera away. 
And don't worry, I will get the camera swapped around here in a second. Hopefully I got enough camera cord. I need a cordless camera. Actually, why don't you hit like and subscribe to my videos? And maybe eventually I can make some money and buy even better gear to make even better videos. No. Either way, enjoy the video. Uh, anyways, so coming through straight here, still on the bottom. Um, I'm going to push my gantry back now a little bit. It gives me more to play with. Pull it back forward actually for a second because I need to get this where it needs to be. There we go. So, let's see if I can get the best camera angle. Yeah, you can kind of see that. Good thing it's 4K, right? Come on. Focus. Yeah, anyways, you can see the bearing back there. Still on the bottom. I'm going to pass this through. Like that. I'm going to tuck as I pull. And there we go. There is something going on here. Did I twist my belt? No, I didn't twist it. There we go. All right. So now we are here. I'm going to drop that. This belt that we have ignored thus far or this end of the belt, I should say. It's all been the same belt. It's actually going to go through. I'm gonna put a little bit of a crease in it. Not a crease, do not crease your belt, but just kind of wiggle it between your fingers, kind of give it a little bit of a curve. And pass it through like so. And there you go. So I'm going to pull this so that I have about equal on both sides. Give or take a bit, like that. Okay, and that's our first belt. Flop it over that way. Put a zip tie on it if you want. Um, I'm actually probably gonna put a couple zip ties on that just to hold it. It's gonna bring my zip tie over here. This is slightly unnecessary. You don't really have to zip tie this down, but I'm just doing it to keep things neat while I move forward here. And hopefully I give both of one, one zip tie like that. Good. All right, so at this point, we're around the A drive, but we're not around the B drive motor. We're not doing anything there yet. So our belts obviously are not tensioned, but everything is in there, everything's running well. I don't hear any pinching. If I run my belts like this, just by moving this back and forth, I don't hear any jumping. I don't hear any skipping. Especially on long motions. Our path is good. All right, now that we have our A belting all done on our Core XY, we're gonna grab our other belt, which we've already determined the length of. We don't have to pull the other one back out. Saves you some time, right? Maybe, hopefully. You don't have to trust me on that, but if, uh, if you wanna go ahead and run your belt, take it back out, Put it back in, switch it all about. You go right ahead and do that, but nonetheless. All right, so starting off with the second belt, same thing as the first time around. I'm going to start off by running a little bit of belt through this and grab the far end of that. I'm going to pass it through. <clears throat> I guess, you know, if I was gonna say one thing, one key thing, Go back to this. Uh, one key thing is try to 
I guess for lack of better terminology, belt one thing at a time. So when you're doing your front idlers, just do your front idlers. Just get those belted. Get your belt around those. Make sure it's proper. Make sure it's good um, before you do anything else. So, yeah. So difference between the front idlers here because they are printed the same. If you notice, this one has a little tiny bit of black on the top. And then on the other side, we've got a big bold black on the top. So that gives us our height difference right there off of those idlers. So in case you were wondering that, okay, I'm gonna hold the black side toward me here. And this time around, we're actually gonna be up closer to the top of the extrusion. We're actually gonna be below that, but that's where we're gonna run it. Well, do that. So it is bypassed through there. <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to throw this. That is throw with my French Canadian accent because of my French Canadian roots. I'm gonna throw that through there. And then we move this over here, you and me. I can talk like this and not be offensive because my mom, she's a Canadian from St. George, Quebec. I have dual citizenship. Maybe Nero will invite me to go visit sometime. All right, so get that pulled through. What you hear is the teeth really just kind of jammed up a little bit in there as we pull them through. We don't want to damage them, but at the same time, they, they're they pretty rugged. These are Gates belts, by the way. Um, they're, they're good belts. So do the same thing we did the first time. I'm going to come around and I'm going to pass this all the way through to the front side over here. So I am doing that. And I'm going to get rid of all the slackies. Try not to twist it up too bad, okay? Like I said, one thing at a time, one, one movement at a time. Then I'm going to pass it back up through. Okay, and then I'm going to pass it down through. This will allow me to make my loop. And I'm going to need to go around that drive that we have. Okay, we just did that. Then we're around that bearing stack. Okay, and we are running along with the other belt on the back here at this point. So we have both belts. One is in front of one portion of the extrusion. The other is in front of the other portion of the extrusion. And this one is going to go all the way here. It's going to get passed all the way back to the inside of the printer. So we're going in and then we're coming out. So in the back, out the front. Okay, we're on that stack. Now we'll give one final overview once we get this all belted up. I don't know exactly how I'm gonna give an overview over and above what we already did, but we will attempt. Okay, I'm gonna push this back now. Not for any reason other than to make room for my damn camera. Let's get that. And if you don't have motion sickness yet, then you're pretty good. All right, right there. Look at that background. See, that's what we're doing. Yeah. And so we're coming out here. Let me pull myself a little bit extra. And then we're going to come around. Again, one movement at a time. 
I could try to make it around that bend if I wanted to, but I'm telling you, you're better off to do this, bring it up, and then pass it back through the other way. Again, you might want to give it a little bit of a curve here. Do not, like, don't get the pliers out and crease the thing. Just, just a little gentle persuasion. How about that? That's all it needs. And there we go. So back to where we were just a few moments ago. This is right where we want to be. Focus. Actually, let me straighten you out a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. Straighten. Good. All right. Pull this forward. Slide it over a little bit. So I'm going to take my other side. Again, we're, we're on the tooth side of the belt. So I'm going to give it a little persuasion like we talked about to get around that. And then I'm going to pull this so that we're about equal on both sides again. Okay. And then I'm going to pinch this right here. A little bit more on it. There we go. And you get a zippy tie. And again, you don't have to use a zip tie, you just let them hang out for now if you wanted to. But when you're making a video like this, there's a lot of pausing and coming back to things, so I don't necessarily get to stop where I would like all the time. But basically, hold that there, and there we go. So at this point, you should have these bottomed out, non-tensioned, both sides. Those are your front idlers. Your Z idler should be much the same. This should only be about, uh, actually, let's go with this. Let's go upper wide, there we go. Get rid of this guy, he's in my way. He's helpful, but he gets in the way. Um, they should be pretty much on like three, four, maybe five threads up there. They should just be hanging on by a thread. Um, all four of them. These are actually a little bit tight, but we can loosen those up. And our AV belts are all in now too. Both AV drive motors are moving as I do this because our belts are stationary. Now, if we let our belts move, one would drive, one would not. If we had this all hooked up, one would drive more than the other. You know, it's, it's the basis of Core XY. So now that I have that, I'm going to reattach my front idlers. Just gonna re-put them together here a little bit. My Ramas. Again, we're going in the plastic, so don't get too crazy on that, just crazy enough. Okay. And if you want to see something fun, you can go back through my library of videos and check out my belting on my first one. I'm not even sure what that looked like but I'm pretty sure it wasn't as easy as this probably looked to be. So the final tightening, well, the, let's see, we'll, we'll go through two phases of actual tightening the, <clears throat> tightening the AB drive on the Core XY. The first portion of that will be when we attach our tap mount to our X. And then finally, when we adjust everything using our Rama's idlers to get a final adjustment on that. So I'm gonna put that back on, I'm gonna put this back on. There we go. And here we go. 
All right, so I hope that helped out. I really, really, really try to get that path in there. I don't know if anybody really does that with the path, you know, all the way through. Um, it's probably one of the more difficult things to kind of grasp on this because you're going through one way, coming out the other, and things are passing by each other, and there's a lot to it, really, you know? Um, and it's hard to explain that. Don't forget to take out your flash points. Anyways, hope you liked the video. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Leave a comment. I tend to answer comments usually within a day. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll see you next time. Thanks.